Burr Brown is a great American success story that began in a 400 square foot garage in Tucson, Arizona and grew into a global electronics phenomenon. What's the real story behind Burr Brown? How did it become an electronics powerhouse? The story really begins before the company was founded. In 1948, the transistor was invented. It was the dawn of the electronics revolution. In 1955, Paige Burr sent his friend Tom Brown one of the first commercially available transistors. I hooked that transistor up and I was just amazed at what it did. It was so superior to the uh, vacuum tube. And as Paige used to say, uh, it's got the reliability of a short piece of bare copper wire. And man, that's something vacuum tubes didn't have. Tom was so excited about the transistor, he attended a big electronics trade show just to see how the new technology was being used. So I went to, to Westcon, and lo and behold, there wasn't a thing on the floor made with transistors. And I thought, that's a big disconnect. I mean, here's a real technical breakthrough in the whole industry, and nobody's using it. And it's clear to me that everything I see here is going to be built using semiconductor technology. Convinced that transistors were the future of electronics, Burr and Brown formed a company in 1956 to develop products based on the new technology. Burr did design work out of his basement in Long Island, and Brown handled manufacturing and sales out of his two-car garage in Tucson. Their first product was a decade amplifier, and the first customer was MIT's Instrument Lab. The first year netted a total of $1,600 in sales. In those days, the shipping of sophisticated electronics required very specialized quality control. But when it got all packaged, I began to wonder how that was going to go through the post office. And had we put a big enough box on it, and was it uh, have enough stuffing around it, and would it survive? So I decided I'd take it out in the yard and see how much it took to destruct it. So I would throw the box 30, 40, 50 feet, and the dog would run out and pick it up and bite it and bring it back, and I'd throw it again, and we rolled it, and we threw it. And we, it didn't hurt the product. So our packing department passed the quality control test. Over the next six years, Burr Brown began a period of rapid expansion. It was spurred by the company's introduction of an important new product in 1959, the operational amplifier. Ultimately, Burr Brown would become the worldwide leader in op amps. From 1957 through 1962, the company had to move twice to accommodate the growing demand for its products, and annual sales topped one million dollars for the very first time. I made this, and I put little terminals in each of these little holes, little uh, electronic terminals. And what this measured was orders, shipment, and backlog. I put it on the wall, covered a month's period, and each one of these little marks was $1,000. So if we could get up to $50,000 a month in sales, we ran off the scale of my measurement stick. Now I can't compute exactly right, but we're doing, we're doing that now where each one of these is in millions, not in, not in thousands. Burr Brown grew quickly. In June 1965, the company moved into a new 22,000 square foot building, building one as it's called today, on 10 acres of land on the International Airport Industrial Park. By the end of that year, annual sales reached $2.4 million. By 1970, Burr Brown had 300 employees and sales of $6.6 .6 million. But the biggest expansion was yet to come. Between 1975 and 1980, annual sales mushroomed from $12 million to $55 million, and the staff grew from 400 to 1,500. Much of the growth was spurred by the company's innovations in microelectronic design and manufacturing, and products that put more and more performance into increasingly smaller chips. I'm really proud of the first monolithic circuit that I designed. It was used about 30 years ago to build modular components, D to A converters and A to D converters. And this is a 16-bit D to A converter in this large 
epoxy module. Later we took those same integrated circuit components and put them into hybrid circuits to get the size down and 30 years later we'll be introducing a 16-bit D to A converter that does the same function as the original brick 30 years ago. With advancing technology, Burr Brown soon moved early and aggressively into international markets. We were one of the very few companies of any size that had a third of its business in Asia, a third in Europe, and a third in the U.S. And we still have that. So the company uh, is very, very uh, diversified in terms of the products, the customers, the applications, the markets. Uh, and that truly is a very much of a strength for the organization. This family here that we have at Burr Brown is like your second family. You spend a lot of time here and you appreciate that people notice and care about you. Tom Brown recognized early on that people were the company's most valuable resource and he worked hard to create an environment that attracted and retained good people. The culture here at Burr Brown is very family oriented. The people are very positive, very nice there. Um, uh, it's like having an extended family here. They encourage you and they let you go in other areas and learn more processes so that you can learn to become better for yourself and they just don't keep you at one job. And I think, you know, it's one of the few companies that al allows you flexibility to learn different areas. The underlying philosophy that I think uh, that we developed very early on was uh, just, just kind of simple. We wanted to benefit mankind by building electronic products. And that we noted or observed that, uh, that uh, people work best when they can identify with that basic purpose. And when they're given the opportunity for individual success along with the company's success. Record-shattering revenues and earnings for the first two quarters of 2000 followed five consecutive years of record profitability and new product introductions. The company's unprecedented growth is based on the dedication of its people and on a product strategy that emphasizes innovative products that serve fast growth applications. So many places around the world and things that you may buy may have something that you've designed or worked on and uh, worked in the t t test equipment of and uh, that's what gives me a lot of pleasure. I think the reason we have been successful is uh, first and foremost, uh, Burr Brown has been blessed with excellent people. Well, there must be something that I like at Burr Brown because I've been here 31 years and if I didn't like it, I've left. I, re I just really have liked growing with Burr Brown. It was sm a small company and we've grown into a bigger company and, and I really just, just like that process. Now, this is damn near a model company model in the sense of the people, its financial performance, its reward to the shareholders, its service to the community, the whole thing. And this is a good model. This is a good thing in all those things.